Welcome back to the Chris and Ollie show. Why the lack of enthusiasm, Ollie? We're alive! Hey, man. I was just thinking about that time I went on a date on Thanksgiving. I recall and you telling me a little bit about this. What's going on? It was actually, yeah, right before I went to your house for Thanksgiving again. You were I, went, I went round two, man. I'm one of the round two people. Ollie was at my house for Thanksgiving Day just That's a few true. weeks ago. It was really wonderful. Did you, did you enjoy yourself? Oh, the cooking oh, was yeah. so good, man. Oh, yeah, it was delicious. I delicious. loved it. Delicious. But what's going on with this? You're, you're feeling a little bit sad, Ollie. I can, I can sense it in your voice. I've known you for like seven. How many years have I known you, Ollie? Six <sighs> years? Like 2017, 2018? 19, 20, 22. I've known you for five years. I yeah, know when you're feeling a little a bit time, blue, man. Ollie. What's going on? Tell me what's going on. Well, things ain't going so well, man. But let me start with Thanksgiving. Sure. So the date went fine. So you went on a date. Okay. But afterwards, I had to get dropped off at my parents' house for Thanksgiving, right? Who dropped you off? What do you mean? This nice young lady dropped me off. Oh, yeah. Mm. And when she got out to give me a hug, my parents saw her. Oh, beautiful. Wonderful. And my parents get crazy about, you know, the type of girls, you know, that I should, that I should be dating. Actually, not even dating, that I should marry. And, and for a lot of the people that don't know Ollie, and don't know Ollie's family, Ollie's family is very traditional. They're Africans. And I, I think they're Muslim. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? No, I didn't say it in any, any way at all. <laughs> no, I just said they're Muslim. And there's nothing wrong with saying it like that. Because actually, in fact, a lot of people don't know this, but my father was Muslim. You told me. Yeah, my yeah, father me. Uh, was Muslim. He passed away in 2012. And, you know, it always makes me um, sad to remember uh, when he passed away. But he passed away in 2012. You know, my mom is Catholic, and she's uh, Mexican. My dad is Middle Eastern, and um, um, yeah. So I, I was raised from all over the place. Yeah, with both India. <laughs> no, in <laughs> there was no India, but I was raised with both religions that were um, more or less, you know, prominent in 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 growing up, and um, neither which were were forced down my throat in any way, shape, or form. Um, it, it was more or less uh, a lot of love and understanding growing up and and uh they kind of allowed me to um find my path and what i believed was the correct path in in god and spirituality and, and love and light and and, and i love that they did it that way and uh, you know yeah. i for whatever you know reason i more or less as a young boy gravitated more to uh uh christianity with my mom so that's what i identify as but anyway i'm so sorry i i, I, thought, I thought you were catholic I yeah, well, yeah, it, you know, it's it's a yeah, it's all based under the same. It's Jesus Christ, but you know, right, Catholicism, right, right. yeah, Christianity. But yeah, I don't know too much about the differences. So I mean, well, I'm I'm not a religious scholar either, my friend. <laughs> so I don't know a whole lot about any of that stuff either. But any, I, I apologize, and I hate to always. Sometimes I, you know, um, I'll step over and interrupt, and I apologize. Please nah, go ahead and your story. You're yeah, so you went on a date. But... <laughs> it's Thanksgiving Day. You're coming over to my house. We had a great time. We had gravy. We had turkey. We had mashed potatoes. Turkey was nice. And man. my favorite part, stuffing. That's my favorite part. But anyway, so you went the on this. Stuffing was good. So you went on stuffing this. Stuffing was good. Thank you. But you went on this date, so tell me all about it. Well, let me tell you about what happened after this. Is This is where, you know, things get a little messy. Sure. Right, because she's a nice young lady, man. I'll vouch for her. It, what, what, does but, she look, what does she look like? What do you think she looks like? Is she black? No. Is she Mexican? No. Costa Rican? No. Nicaraguan? No. White? No. Asian? You got it, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's an Asian. Hey, but, but look, <laughs> but look, man. She has a BBL, okay? She has a what now? A, a, a BBL? I don't know. If a I, BBL. Is that a degree? I mean, I know Asians <laughs> love to go to the universities. Is that like a BA, like a well, master's it's, degree? It's a degree from Columbia. That's no, what it is. No. Wait, Columbia no, so what's, University, a, what's a BBL? Man. I mean, I, I, I think I know it's what a, a BBL is, but. It is a Brazilian butt lift. So she got ass. That wait, she wait, paid no, for. Wait, she no, paid so, for ass. Wait, wait, so, oh God. 
which I'm <laughs> which I'm cool with. Wait, so you're telling me that I'm she, cool with it? No, hold on. So you're telling me this young lady has a fake butt? Is what you're saying? Yes. Does yeah, she have the she diaper? Does. does it look like a diaper? No, because oftentimes the butt looks like they have a like a weird diaper. It, it's no, not not like Kim K. More like okay. toned down, like you know, not not too fat. You know, that sounds like a rapper. Too but, fat. Nah. <laughs> but it's it's not something that you want your parents to see. Why not? You know, depending on the I type mean, of parents you have. Your mom has BBL, right? Absolutely not. Bro. I thought your mom had a BBL. Absolutely not. She's just African. Just African. Okay, yeah. I just what? I mean, I didn't look at her, but I would never. But, uh, I would. You've never. I would my, never look. You've at never your seen my. I've seen your mother. I would never look at her. Butt, by the way, I I've seen her. <laughs> I've seen her. I can actually I can draw a picture of her right now, but I'm not <laughs> gonna do that. But anyway, continue with your story. So this nice Asian young lady that you went on a date with on Thanksgiving, which is very bizarre. Who would go on a date? On, I but, mean. Those restaurants were empty, man. It sounds like she's a latchkey kid, if you ask me. But anyway, tell me the story. I don't know what that means. Well, tell me the story. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they saw her, and obviously, you know, traditional parents, you know, you come from a certain country. They're Which gonna... country? Russia? Eritrea. Is that where you're from? That is where I'm from. What do they do there in Eritrea? What is it called? <laughs> Eritrea. Costa Rica? What is it? Costa Rica. No, really, no. What is it? No, for real, no. What is it? Eritrea? Eritrea. Mm -hmm. What do they eat there? They eat injera. They eat some shuro. There's a lot of different foods out there, man. Bro, it's, I it's don't good, never have you, have you been to like a any of these words. Bro, have you been to like a Ethiopian or Eritrean like restaurant? No, or anything? one like, time it's good, man. I'm, no, one time I was good. in the city of Anaheim in in beautiful Southern California, and I was very hungry. And so I stumbled upon this restaurant. It was an Ethiopian restaurant. So I'm very excited. I'm, I walk in. I'm like, I can't believe I've never had Ethiopian. But I walk in and I'm very, like I said, very, very excited. And I sit down at the table, the, the host, which so happens to be the host, owner, and also the server uh, for whatever reason. They handle business. They handle business. This guy was doing all of it. So he sits me down at the table and uh, I'm waiting, 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 waiting. This guy looks very disgruntled. He's, he looks, he's sweating. He's angry. He just looks very <laughs> upset at the situation. I'm, you upset I'm, him. Something you did upset him. I personally didn't do anything to the guy. He looked like that when I arrived. Anyway, I was looking at the, at the menu and there was like blood sausages and, and all Whoa. kinds of. Yeah, there was like blood sausages. There was like blood sausages and all kinds of weird. And oh, so I, they're not Muslim. I don't know. It was an they, Ethiopian they, restaurant, but at that point, park. I don't like blood sausages that sounds disgusting it's disgusting who would eat that a pig would eat that that's <laughs> disgusting i would never eat that so i i didn't walk out of the restaurant i was like I'll, I'll eat something else you know i'm gonna give these people a chance i waited for 20 minutes and this man he never he never even came to the table and say hey would you like some water so i actually which i rarely do this but i got up and i left Oh, so that was my experience at an Ethiopian restaurant. But anyhow, tell me more about well, this why story. Didn't you, I mean, you should have been Ethiopian when you walked in. That was your first mistake, bro. That's racism. You're not, a, That's you're not racism. about to serve no. You no sound you you sound like those Jews <laughs> murdering the Palestine people right now. Oh shit! <laughs> oh no! Don't compare me to that. <laughs> you're like the Jews murdering, the strangling, and. Bombing you should have had me. You should have had me there as a buffer. Do you like the Palestinians or the Jews? What do you like? If you um, had to pick, I'm on, I'm on the Palestinian side, man. Oh, they're they're yeah. the underdogs. You know, the, and I think for me, it's Old like I genocide. I, I feel like the Palestinians have some views to me that seem a little bit extreme to a certain degree, but I feel like the Jews have been a continuous bully. To the Palestinians for many years, but anyhow, I think we're deviating to a point that's of no return. Yeah, so let's get back well, to the story. The They've been killing this... kids since 1970 something, man. I believe it. I've seen actually, I've seen videos of Jews going to people's homes, Palestinian people's homes, and they tell them like, "Oh, actually, we own this land, this plot of land, so you got to leave." And the Palestinian people are like, "No, we've lived here for like three generations," and they're like. 
you know, we don't we don't care. Like we love Adam Sandler. We don't care. <laughs> you know, Happy Madison. Like we well, you, you got to leave. And then so it's know, their land. It's, it's real sad. It's God's land, and they just took it. It's real so, sad. I mean, it's real real sad. It let yeah, me know man. what do you what do you think? Are you on the side of the Palestinian people? Or are you on the side of the Jewish people? Like, let me know. I would love to know because it, it's very divisive. It's very polarizing. And I'd like to know what real people like yourself actually think about this conflict in in the Middle East. So, anyhow, back to your story uh, <laughs> yeah. about this nice Asian. I keep Asian, forgetting about the whole story. Well, there's a nice Asian lady, and she's got a, a fake butt, a BBL is what you called it. But anyway, tell me the story. But, yeah, I mean, my parents are just not having it. What were they not having? So, so they, she walked out the car. She said goodbye. She hugged you goodbye, and they saw her big fake butt. It must have been so very that, big. So that how big was this butt? Molly? <laughs> big enough to notice, bro. Well, we'll do big hands. We we'll do hands. How big was it? Like if you. So I'm a skinny guy, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so you're looking at me. Okay. Well, no, we'll do this. We'll so, do this. Hold on. I mean, bigger, no, hold on. No, 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 than... hold on. We'll do this. We'll do this. This is her back, her spinal cord. I'm seeing it. Okay. How big was it? Is it like this? Or was it like this? It was like that. That's very small. It was like that. That's very small. That's but I mean, shit. that's her back, right? Yeah, it's her spinal cord. It, this is like a side yeah. profile. Side profile. You see what I'm saying? They're looking yeah, at it from side Yeah, they're, they're looking at it like that. Was it like that? So maybe like from the camera angle. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, man. Wow, Ollie. What saying. are you going to do with that? Jeez. But that's not even natural. It goes against God, man. I agree. Getting all of these body modifications, you know, it's going to be a problem. Like, the race doesn't really matter. Uh, it kind of does. <laughs> to it, my it, parents, it, some, sometimes, because, like, when you come from a certain country, they want you to, like, you know, stick with your people. Sure. Yeah, and and, and that's um, not racism, by the way. When whenever a white person says, you know, they want to date within the white, you know, uh, community, there's right. nothing wrong with that. It, or when the blacks say they should date with the blacks, there's nothing wrong with that. When the Asians want to date with, them, there's nothing wrong with that. It's tradition. I don't think that's, that's racist. And I and, and, and by is. the way, I'm in an interracial uh, interracial relationship. You know, my girlfriend's white. That's true. My ex and, was white. There you go, and there's or nothing wrong with my it. ex is white. Yeah. Your ex is white, and and that Switch young lady races. you were dating is Asian. There's nothing wrong with that, but what I'm saying is what you were saying is the BBL, the body modifications. This young lady, um, I, I off camera you were telling me that this young lady is um a devout Christian. Is that right? Somewhat. Yeah, she's a devout. Some, somewhat devout. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I would say more than more than most. She loves Jesus Christ, but how can she? <sighs> How can I she, mean, how can she do that? How can she get those modifications? Yeah, and and that's the, she's about her religion, like and that. that's the problem. It's like, how can you be a devout Christian and modify your body in that manner? How could you go under the knife? And I'd like to ask you guys that question: If you believe in God, if you believe in Christ, if you believe in a higher power, how is it that you can go under the knife and get modified? How is it that you can get implants on your forehead, on your face, on your nose, on your buttocks, on your breasts, possibly tattoos? Is that for God? And it's not even just one God. I'm not referring to just Christianity. I'm 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 speaking about every religion, you know, Muslim, guess, yeah. Buddhist, um, you know, Christianity. Is it for God to modify your body, to get a BBL, to get um, you know, implants on silicone implants on your face or tattooing your face? Is that for God? I mean, technically, you're rejecting God's image. I mean, that's what it says. I, most, I agree. That's most holy true. books, like when you get some sort of piercings, tattoos, like body modifications, it's like you're going against God's image, and you should avoid doing that. I agree. Essentially. I think it's it. I think that. Okay, so here's the thing. I think if you are a person who walked a life of sin for a long time. I think it's it's understandable. People sometimes stray and they get lost, and I understand that. But if you get lost and now you're found and you co you confront God, and your life has changed forever, why would you continue modifying your body, getting piercings, um, putting silicone implants in your face or your body or your breasts or your butt, tattoos, 
why would you continue doing that? Why would you continue mutilating your body? In fact, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a religious scholar. I'm not a biblical scholar, but I do know that it does say in the Bible that you should not mutilate your body. So I think once it gets to that point, are you for God if you are mutilating your body? Because a BBL, a fake butt, is mutilating your body. And you're talking about like after they've already... Like, relinquish their their selves to Christ or right. to or or to Allah or to Buddha, whatever God right. you believe in. So it's afterwards, a, they continue to do continue what to they, yeah what get tattoos, been doing. get piercings on I your see. face. It's like should you continue to do that? I don't. I me personally, I don't think it's right. I mean, personally, I don't have a problem with it. Oh, but. But here's the thing. What do you mean? Here's the thing. If it's excessive, then I just wouldn't even take her on a date in the first place. What if she has a nose job? Is it noticeable? It's always noticeable. I mean, come on. Who has I mean, a if it's good like, nose if, job? If it's like Michael Jackson, then it's like, no, no, we're not, we not doing that. His nose is falling off. I'm not rocking with that. Yeah. But if it's like... I'm trying to think of some sort of celebrity that has... Let me think. Does Kim Kardashian have she like, Kim Kardashian everything on her body surgery on her face is absolutely and most certainly I fake. Know, I know her ass is fake, but and, and here's her the thing. Face. Before I started on my journey into uh creating uh my personal business that I run, which is uh film production, I film music videos, commercial work, I, I do photography and things of that nature. Prior to that, prior to taking that leap into doing that. I worked for a financial institution, so I wore a suit to work. I wore a tie, and you know, in in you know, whole slick outfit. And I had to slick back my hair and a whole the whole nine yards. And as you guys know, yep. I mean, I have a hand tattoo. I have a tattoo on my hand and you know, my neck. And at the time, I had a mohawk, and I would just slick it back. So during that period of my life, I was living a double life. I was living in this alternative subculture. Um, alternative image but uh, but i was also living in the corporate world wearing a suit to work so if you think about that what was i serving what team was i on the corporate world or the alternative world it, it's very similar to people that continue to modify their bodies once they you know find christ find god are you doing the right thing by continuing to modify your body or are you destined to go to hell? Oh, damn. It's like, dude. what do you do at that point? Because you were wearing makeup on your hands too. Yeah. Like you, had I, to, you had to cover it up. You yeah, had to, yeah. I used to put makeup to, on my hand. And your neck too. I remember that. I ne like well, I don't bit. know if I did it on my neck. but Because oh, you always had a collar. So yeah, I wore a like collar a and a tie. And, you know, Ollie um, and I at the time, you know, I, I met Ollie five or six years ago. And we worked at this financial institution, and we both wore suits to work. And yeah, my neck tattoos didn't show, but my hand, uh, it, you know, is still exposed. I so I would put oh, this... you know what's funny? What? Oh shit! You just reminded me. What? I thought that you broke your hand for the longest time oh, because yeah, you yeah, would yeah. you would wear a wrist guard or or something like yeah, wrapping yeah, around yeah, your yeah. hand. Yeah, whenever I'd I... always ask you, like, yo, what's wrong with your hand? And yeah, like, when, like, whenever what? I didn't have like makeup for it, like, I would hell? wrap it up. But you know, it's, when I had them, it was trip. called Derma Blend. I would put this makeup on my hand and it worked and it was like a lotion. It, it would just completely disappear on my hand. And it was wonderful because I got to live like a, like a literal double life. I got to just be like this punk rocker, super tattooed during the nighttime and be like this corporate, you know, clean cut guy during the daytime, which is very interesting. You know, it actually, Kat Von D. Is one of these people because um, I'm sure you've heard of Kat Von D, the you know world famous tattoo artist, um, and uh, yeah, that's the uh, the Adams family girl, right? She dated yeah. she she dated Steve O or something Steve -O like that. Steve O from Jack, yeah, she's currently married to um, Raphael. He's a singer of the band Prayers, and she seems like a really wonderful young lady. She's actually just on Theo Vaughn's podcast, and um, you know she's actually given her life to Christ, and you know Ooh. she's. Well, everybody's just giving their life to Christ. Now. I feel like I a lot of people. Well, Nas like, X, now Kat Von D. Yeah, Richie the Barber. Oh, shit. A lot of people out there giving their life to Christ. But are they for real? Are they for real? I don't even know how to feel about it. It's almost becoming a trend. I feel like we've gotten to this point where 
the counterculture has become redundant where it no longer matters because whatever is counterculture is no longer quote unquote cool i feel like counterculture is now becoming the like conservative becoming religious it's becoming true. like more um internalized and with god because that upsets the um, uh, the people on the left and the people part of the pop culture. But I, I mean, feel- it's like it's a good thing. But, I think it's but great, only, but only if they're being serious about it. I want them to be serious about it. I most certainly want them to be very serious about what they're doing with their lives. And if, what I've noticed with a lot of these people, like Kat Von D, for example, is that she, her father, um, he was a. I don't believe he. I believe he was a pastor, actually. Oh, he was too. So it's like when Lamas X is dead. He was also a pastor. Yeah, yeah. So I think that a lot of these folks, um, their values are ingrained with early onset. It sounds like a disease, but early onset Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a disease, but early onset Christianity, and so they're raised with these values. And as they become adults, they realize, like, let me go back. Let me go back home. Yeah, you know, oftentimes with these celebrities, when they when they try to go into Christianity, they want to change it for themselves. They start you to, want think to modify like, it, like yeah. I can do I can do this and that. You know, I'm still yeah. a Christian. I'm yeah, still yeah. Muslim. I'm still this and that. Yeah, it's like no, dude, you're you're doing some wild shit. Yeah, there's Christians out there. He'll be like, yeah, I'll get you, I'll just get horns on my head. Who's oh. I'll get silicon horns on my head? I I don't think that went too well, did it? No, I'll get fake breast implants. That's there's no way. BBLs like your Asian girlfriend. Yeah, no, I'm not girlfriend. <laughs> I hope not. No, it's not. I mean, not, she not, sounds not like happening. a nice lady. How no, tall she, is she? She's nice. She's how, like how tall is she? She's like five six. This like this five seven. How tall are you? I'm six foot. Oh yeah, that's a good height. Yeah. I don't know if they could see that on camera, but. I think I'm shorter right here. I'm some smaller chair, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, but what do you like about this young lady? Is she funny? Does she make you laugh? Does she make you smile? Does she make you feel? What does she make you feel? No, beyond the physicality no. of it all, does she make you feel anything? Is there some sort of connection with you and this young lady? How do you feel? I don't think there's a connection with me and this young lady. Okay. But she's funny. But, I remember you telling me she was a little funny. Yeah, she has a sense of humor. She, yeah, she she's I. So it's who, cool. Who who makes you laugh, Ollie? Like I'm not talking about people, but I'm saying like comedians, the biggest comedians in the world. Who makes you laugh? If you had a top five of comedians, top five Ooh, top comedians, five. who would be your top five comedians that you would say like this is my top five? I, this is the only comedians I'll ever listen to for the rest of my life. All right, I got to think about this for a second. Think about it. Well, number one is Dave Chappelle. Okay, Dave you, Chappelle for sure. Okay, I can't argue with that. Patrice O'Neill. Okay, he's also black. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll sure. <laughs> Two black men. Okay. Uh, Chris Rock. Also black. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. You're not gonna like this one, man. Kevin Hart. Also black. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's see one he's more. Like as one tall more. as your thigh. Yeah, <laughs> he's a little short, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, Matt Reif. Oh, Matt Reif is kind of funny, man. I'm leaving, dude. He's been popping off, man. He's I'm like leaving. A, he's like a TikTok comedian superstar. No, okay. Lim- okay. It's kind of funny. Matt Reif, to me personally, so there's a term called thirst trap. And I think that a lot of people have utilized this term for a lot of OnlyFans models. And they utilize it for men looking at women on the internet who are scantily dressed or showing off their asses their breasts what are you trying to say bbls pause Pause, bro what what i'm trying to say say, no no think about it if you ever see any of matt rives um comedical uh what is it called live events uh, comedy specials what do you call them all the people in the crowd they're what are they males no no they're females they're females hey but props props to him though no 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 He's showing up, taking pictures, photography for Instagram and TikTok of him shirtless, showing his nipples, showing his what? man breasts, showing his six pack. And you know, I haven't seen any of that. I've seen it. I've seen it on his Instagram. And uh, he's I've only seen his stand up. 
He's I've only learning seen his these women, these married women. And there's actually a clip that I married. saw. No, it's the truth. There's a clip that I saw of a woman. She's probably in her 40s, and she brought Matt Reif cookies to the show. And he actually ate them on stage. He was like, oh, thank you so much for the cookies. Every girl, there was just a sea of women at his show. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're telling me you don't want cookies? No, I don't. From an older woman? No, I you don't. You know they're going to taste good. Probably, yeah. But I don't want them. <laughs> is what, what I'm saying is like, if you, you... would take them. No, I... Okay, for example... You take one. No, for example, okay, think about this. Um, when you're a comedian, and, and there's a reason why comedians kind of more or less wear a uniform. A lot of them wear jeans and a black t-shirt, or, or, um, or all black. Very neutral colors, no logos. The reason why a lot of comedians do that is because they love their art form so much that they don't want to be judged or pre or, or have anybody have any preconceived notions of who they are based on what brands they're wearing or what, you know, their um, political affiliations are. They just want to be a blank of uh, a uh, canvas. canvas. Matt Reif's not doing that. He's oh. trying to be like the, the guy he's trying to be the Brad Pitt comedy and there's nothing wrong with him being an attractive young he's man he's succeeding too he's, he's getting he's, he's getting the he's hose one of the man biggest comedians in the world he's is it right i don't know he got his own netflix special D really i don't even go on yeah. netflix anymore but he got a netflix special dude i i feel like he's people are trashing it though he's really not a funny guy and i'm not saying that because he's an attractive man because i think there's a lot of comedians out there uh, men and Men can recognize when another man is, I think, uh, a handsome man. And for example, there's uh, Mark Norman. I think he's a handsome guy. And um, I don't know who that is. A very funny comedian. Uh, oh, for example, Joe Rogan. He he understands. Joe Rogan understands that he's a very buff guy. He takes steroids. He's tattooed, um, and he always wears really big clothes on stage, like a big flannel. And you know, he doesn't want to show his muscles or his or his tattoos because he knows. It distracts from his art. His art form is comedy. And so if you don't have a shtick, give them your comedy, not your body. And I think what Matt Reif's doing is giving people his body first and his looks first and his comedy second. And his comedy is suffering because it's not very good. Well, you should be happy to know that they're trying to cancel him right now because he made like domestic violence jokes on stage during his Netflix special. I, I, what do you mean? I heard a little bit he of like a, I he made a joke about domestic violence. In so what way? So basically, um, he said he was like in a restaurant and the waiter came up to him and he noticed that she had a black eye. Uh huh. A black eye. A, a yeah, black, a yeah black, women should not date black eyes. A black yeah. eye. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm joking. And That's then, a joke. <laughs> like part part of his joke with the dog. <laughs> Sorry. Part of, part of his joke was if you like, need a black um, guy you're gonna get punched in the eye oh, yeah, you, you gotta be careful head. you gotta be careful I'm, kidding, I'm joking I'm just saying. Joke. Yeah. Um, he was saying like oh they should you know keep her in the kitchen right because like you know, she's, pregnant. she's like you know the face of the company she has a black eye she's serving food oh, okay. uh, but then he's just like but if she knew how to cook she wouldn't be getting those black eyes uh, and then yeah it's Okay, I think I think it was kind of funny. I'm not I'm not telling the I'm not telling the joke right. Obviously, you gotta right, watch yeah, the special. But okay, well you should probably that's not base, that's watch. That's the basic the of what it was. Well, actually, no free promotion. No, yeah, I, don't I, don't watch the special. I haven't watched it. I've seen some of his stuff. I I don't I think it's substandard. I think there's a lot of comedians out there who are really wonderful. Um, you know, um, if you you know, for me personally, if you ask me what my top five is, I would say it's um. Uh, I know this might be slightly controversial, but Louis C.K. is probably number one. The one that abused women? He didn't abuse women. No, that's not true. That's oh, misconstrued he was, he in, in the in, media. In the the media way. lies. It's fake news. He likes fake to news. piss on women. No, he, oh, he, no, he, he jerks off in that's front of women. He, he jerks off in front of women. Okay. No, I don't know what Some, his kinks are. But something like that. Regardless of that, he's had a lot of really <laughs> prolific specials, comedy specials. I think he's okay. a really great comedian. Okay. Name four more pedophiles. I'm not. I'm, I think Shane Gillis is also very, very funny. I, I don't. I don't know who that is. 
And then there's also another young man. I guess you, I would describe him as something like he's like the Joker. Like, you know, you know the character Joker in right. The Dark Knight? He's kind of like the Joker of the comedy world where he's like the boogeyman. Like, people are afraid of him. If, if you guys haven't watched any of um, Mike David Red Bar, his content is hilarious. And if, you, if you're any in way involved in the subculture of comedy, you know, with Joe Rogan and, you know, Burt Kreischer and Theo Vaughn and all these guys... He says yeah. wild stuff then? Very, very wild stuff, yeah. These okay, like psychoanalytical breakdowns of all of these people, body language, all these things. I think it's I think it's obscene and I think it's hilarious and um um and, and, and I I enjoy it in some way. It's slightly misguided, but I think it's a, it's a ton of fun. What's his name again? Uh Mike David. Uh okay, the show's called it. Red Bar. Red Bar I'll check Radio. That one out. Yeah, it's really funny. Red Bar Radio. You're selling me on this. It dude, You're it's, it's I'm this. telling you, dude, it's funny. It's it's like it's it's so funny. It's obscene, but it's funny, and it's it, it's kind of offensive. Uh, my girlfriend hates Red Bar. Whenever I put on Red I Bar, she's like, "Turn jokes. it off, Chris." She's like, "I don't want to listen to that guy." And I'm like, "Dude, he's the funniest guy out there right now." I mean, he's a scumbag. He has great hair though, but he's a scumbag. But it's like you know, I mean, like I I can't. I, it's like I can't stop. I can't look away. There's all these all funny right. comedy specials, and like, okay. You'll go on Netflix, you'll watch a comedy special for like half an hour, and you'll be like, you could be at work, for example, on your lunch break, and you're watching a special quietly, and then you'll think in your head, oh, that was a funny bit. Oh, that was pretty funny. But you're not actually laughing. You're not actually laughing. Yeah, you're, like, was, oh, that, you're like, that was clever. I know oh. a comedian. I know yeah, a comedian. Like, Are we was... thinking of the same person? Who? Theo Vaughn. Dave Chappelle. Oh, oh no, Dave Chappelle's no. Dave Chappelle's Netflix specials. Are not funny. true. I've Those seen are, I've seen Dave Chappelle. Maybe not, he maybe wasn't not even funny. Maybe not your show in person. No, but his specials are wasn't. Funny. I saw I saw Dave Chappelle live, <laughs> and I was so mad. I wasted my life savings seeing Dave Chappelle. It was it's expensive. I saw it, the, uh, tickets were like five hundred dollars. You were Chappelle. front row though. Uh, it was like six rows back, and it was like an yeah. arena show. I couldn't believe it. It was the That's worst show ever. <laughs> I saw Chris Rock though he uh, played he performed right before uh, Dave Chappelle and he was very oh, very he funny. For him. No, uh, no, there was oh, um, two shows. No, there was a, there was a rapper that opened first. Who was it? But it was all part of the same show. Was it, um, right? Or did you go gosh, two, two separate nights or was it the same? No, night? it was the same night. Same oh, night. Nice. Yeah, yeah. But anyhow, um, yeah, uh, Dave Chappelle is a very funny guy uh theo vaughn like you mentioned i think theo vaughn's a prolific um i would call him more like a philosopher a man of ideas he's hilarious but yeah, his I netflix vaughn, special was not it's good it's not good it was i'm not, not good, yeah dude. i'm not even going to um sugarcoat that one i've been watching theo vaughn's uh podcast before he was um sensation on tiktok and before he went on on joe rogan um i was one of the first people to watch his podcast but <laughs> As much as I care about his content and him as a comedian, um, it just it wasn't. Yeah, he's not good. I mean, I've seen good stand up since he's done, but the specials he did on Netflix were like too safe, too censored. Like he's like afraid. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know Red Bar says the N word. He's a Jew. Wait, Red Bar is white. Yeah, he's a white. When he you says said the when you when you said that, what his name is Mike. Mike David. Mike David, that sounds like a black name. I thought it was a black dude. No, he's a white guy. Damn. Saying the N word. Dang. Well, doesn't Louis C.K.? Yeah, no, but the way that Mike. Oh, David, so all no. of your favorite comedians <laughs> are white and say the N word. Okay, no, no, we, we got a good idea of what Chris. No, likes you, oh, no, I know, I know. That's I'm, wild. No, I'm just. I, I mean, they're funny, but no, I, in in context, it's funny. But you know, I I think he's a funny guy, and I personally don't would never say the N word, even though I'm probably darker in complexion of will smith but i mean i still would never say, say it on the like mic that, right now i would never say it on them i'll bleep it out okay fine <laughs> not gonna say it, <laughs> <Not> gonna say it. <laughs> you thought i was gonna say it dude you I'll, thought you I'll got bleep, me I'll bleep, it out. <laughs> I'll bleep it out no okay so you tell me your, i would have kept that in so you told me your, all you told me your favorite comedians what what your I, recently um i did a video um, you know, I release a video every Monday. Uh, uh, I do deep dive breakdowns and mysteries and cults and, uh, um, uh, you know, all kinds of different stuff. Whatever's interesting and, and mystique and bizarre, I'll do a video every Monday on this YouTube channel. And, and recently, somebody asked me, what's your top five movies? I saw that. 
I saw that at the end of your video, dog. Oh, great. And so, I was... What are your top I five was so... Movies. Unbelievably upset. What? what do you, wait, what do you mean? What, Those you movies mean? were ass, bro. Your top five is straight what? ass. What do you... Because I, I in, a, you, in no, a previous no, comment no. section, you were saying something about Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction wasn't even in your top five, bro. Pulp Fiction's a great... Oh, no, like, okay, no. Let me know. Pulp Bro, Fiction's a great movie. You gotta remind them what your top five is. Um. Okay, so... Well, the list on the video that I made, so I believe yeah. it was... Um, <clears throat> you had something Why about... Why do you gotta put me in a spot like some, that? Something about Mary. No, right. I remember that one. The, the first one was, I said, Beautiful. Um, Alejandro and I do too. I said, American History X. Um... There's something about Mary, about Mary. Uh, Eternal Sunshine, and uh, Amores Perros. It's uh, those are my top five. Do you guys even know what he's talking about? Best movies I, ever I, made, I baby. Because if I tell you my top five, tell at me. the very least, tell me what it is. They'll know what I'm talking about. I have discerning taste, my friend. I like good, the good stuff. I don't like trash so mainstream me, films. Let me tell you, man. Number one. What Harry Potter? That's actually number five. Um, That's number five, bro. That's number five. But but we're getting there, man. We're getting there. <laughs> so number one. Okay. Tell me. The Departed. If you guys haven't seen that, you gotta check that out. Matt Damon. You know he used to suck uh, yeah, he used to Leonardo suck that DiCaprio. guy's dick. What's that guy's dick? We're not um, we're not gonna talk about that. Harvey Wein he used to suck Harvey Weinstein's dick. Do you know Somebody that? had to suck Harvey Weinstein's dick. No, it's dick. the truth. Look, Somebody no, had to. No, hold on, look it up. Why not let it be Matt Damon? Matt Damon used to suck um, Harvey Weinstein's penis. And I'm not lying. I'm not joking. I'm not being dark. And you humor. know Harvey Weinstein worked on the Lord of the Rings movies too? Is, is it, it Miramax? Is it? No. What company did he? It, it was New Line um, Cinema. New but Line he, was, he was part of it though. Wow. Was like part of the produ like producer. I don't know. Whatever the fuck his role is. Okay. So you. That's actually number four. Okay. That's number four. So I'm going backwards. We'll start start from the top again. Okay. So you, the Departed. Departed. Okay. Matt Damon six dick. Okay. <laughs> Shutter Island. Shutter Island. Okay. Pirates of the Caribbean. Of Caribbean. Dead man's chest. Just dead, dead man's, man's chest. That sounds dead very sussy. It's such a good fucking movie, man. That and sounds the CGI. Closeted in homosexual. That movie okay. Is go, sick, okay, man. Because I fuck with VFX. If you guys didn't know. Okay. Number four. The Lord of the Rings. These are all like bro. nerd movies. Fire, man. It's fire. Don't Number tell five, me. Harry Don't Potter, bro. Harry Potter, bro. That's black magic. That is one of the, bro, best top five. No. Best top five. No. I don't like this. They'll either agree with me or call me 12, bro. It's, it's one of the Those are not. They'll either agree okay. with me or call me 12. No. Those, are... those are fire movies. <laughs> Especially the first two with Leonardo DiCaprio. See, I can't. The I've never and okay, Shutter so, Island. I've Those seen Shutter. Okay, I've never seen The Departed. What? Be because I cannot watch a film knowing that Matt Damon was sucking <laughs> Harvey Weinstein's penis for Every, years. Everybody was sucking Harvey Weinstein's dick. Yeah, bro. but Matt Damon's a man, and he's bro. sucking another man's penis. You don't think a lot of those motherfuckers Disgusting. in Hollywood were sucking that dude's dick? He controlled everybody. Yeah, but it's disgusting. The fact that he would do it, like demoralize himself and suck another man's penis. Matt Damon did this. Matt Damon sucked Harvey Weinstein's penis. Bro, how do you think he it's got disgusting. the born? How do you think he got the born identity? Yeah, born he into had, sucking he had, penis. Like, he had it's to do something. Awful. Man. Sometimes, bro, that's Hollywood, bro. That's I'll Hollywood. stop at Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting was pretty good. I actually watched that for the first time. Yeah, for the first time, like last. Last year? Actually, no, yeah. it was this year. Earlier this year, I watched it for the first time. Did you like it? It was a pretty good movie. It was aight. Yeah, not top five, though. <laughs> yeah, definitely, not top five. Definitely but... not top five. It's just hard. It's hard to know all this information, like, knowing, um, it, like, all the behind-the-scenes stuff that's going on in Hollywood, like, with Matt Damon, all these different... It's, like, it's hard to watch those movies and just be okay with it, I guess. So it, it you was, don't have proof that he was sucking dick, bro. He was, You're talking like it actually you, he happened. Do, he you did have it. zero he, proof. I'll, I'll say it, matter of fact, There's right no now. Proof look, look, look at this. I'll say it right dick, now, bro. Matt Damon, give... <laughs> <laughs> Matt Damon. Now, I'm being very serious, by the way. Matt Damon, 
gave oral sex oh to Harvey Weinstein. Oh if that is a fact, a lot of people will say that it's not true because they don't know. But that's the truth. It's not a rumor in Hollywood. It's a fact. <laughs> that's what he was doing. That's what he did. That's, that's Are you doing BTS or something, bro? It's Were the you truth. there? It's, it's the absolute truth. You got iPhone that's... footage? I can't say anymore because okay. I, I a lot of people tell me, like, Chris didn't kill himself. I know some stuff, and um, I did not kill myself. Neither of us are suicidal. None, none of us. Neither are, of us. We can't even suicidal. say that. We don't want to unalive ourselves is what it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. YouTube's yeah. going to block yeah. that out. They right? don't like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just telling the truth. That's the truth. It's the absolute truth. That's what Matt Damon did. That's what he does. He still does it actually and you know i'm still it, watching oceans 11 i would never I'm watch it i've actually oceans never watched 11. it i'm never gonna watch it oceans 12 nope oceans 13 never oh, man. and i have there's nothing wrong with um you know someone's sexual proclivity or um sexual interest but uh, it, but for me when it when it's a man who's a straight man like a matt damon who will suck another man's wiener for success, it's disgusting. I, I can't get behind that. Well, he's That's not really straight. Gross. He is he's straight. Not, he's he's straight. doing it for monetary reasons, which makes me not respect him. But that means that he's gay. He is now. Yeah, he is now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, once you do it, you're you're done. Yeah, he's departed. He's departed oh, from God. being straight. <laughs> Completely departed. But yeah, I um, but I I mean, I think that. Brings us to the end. Here? Yeah, I guess so. Man. I guess it does. Why are you pausing? What are you say? I was so. trying to. Be... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just really hungry. I don't hungry. think we had anything I, else. I want to eat some dinner. I'm yeah, really... man. But yeah, I came here straight after work. Yeah, you're well, awesome. I ate, and then I came, and then I came. Yeah, had you're to awesome, eat first. Dude. I was hungry. Well, thank you guys for watching, and thank you if you watch till the very end. That really means the world to me. I'm sure it means a lot to Ollie here. We appreciate um, y'all. We do. Um, if you'd like to support this channel, please subscribe. Leave us a comment below with any suggestions of what you'd like to see in the near future. And um, share it with a friend if you would like. And, um, and let us know what your top five favorite comedians are and yeah. your top five favorite movies yeah what are your That's top what i want to know uh, yeah I, you guys you asked me the question i'd like to know what your favorite i there's movies i'd like to watch too that i've never seen before so if you have a top five favorite movies let me know what they are i'd love to watch them i'd love to I, yeah that's actually a great idea and rate ours too yeah rate rate the movies yeah, rate the his, movies no, his top five is god they were great I'm they're, getting, I'm getting they're bro. I'm out. iconic films all right well anyway thank you guys take care make it's your crazy. choices see ya You can hear the zipper on there too.